Hello, I'm Darren again. Today's questions are asking, how do narcissistic people react whenever you no longer give them the attention they crave? Perhaps you've been using the grey rock method or maybe going no contact. How do they react whenever you ignore them? So to answer these questions, I'll mostly be referring to what could be a romantic relationship. However, these things could apply to any kind of relationship with a narcissistic person. It could be with a parent, a sibling, even a friend. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about some of the common threads that run throughout the examples and the reasons behind them. So if you like this video, if you find it helpful or interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. So just to remind you, narcissism is often characterized by a sense of entitlement and there can be a lot of arrogance. They can be very self-absorbed. There's a lack of empathy for others and being highly disagreeable and highly sensitive to criticism. There is also a constant need for validation and admiration from others. This admiration makes them feel important, cherished, and because they believe they're entitled to it, the loss of it can cause an ego wound and they can react in different ways to try to get it back. Some of those reactions can be melodramatic, some of them can even be abusive. So what does it happen when you no longer pay them any attention? Well, first of all, if you're ignoring them, they might actually ignore you. Now, there can be different reasons for this. Narcissists can be very competitive. Anything you can do, they can do better. Or if they use the silent treatment during the relationship, they could just be doing the same thing again, hoping they will get the same result. Or it could be, maybe they're hoping that if you see they're not bothered, you might actually cave in sooner, so they win. Secondly, they might actually try to remind you of the good times. They might bring out old photographs of you together. Do you remember what a great time we had there? Look how happy we looked together back then. They might even hear questions like, where did it all go wrong? However, there's little to no mention of how they may have ruined some of those moments or how their behaviour has contributed to your unhappiness. There may even be romantic gestures, sweet talking, gifts, they might try to lure you back with promises of I was about to buy you a new car or I was about to book us a world cruise. Now whether they mean any of those things or not, once you're engaging with them again, they have won. Thirdly, they might actually try to reason with you. Now they may even use some of the same phrases that you used endlessly to try to reason with them but got nowhere. They may say things like, can we agree to differ, or can we try to meet each other halfway, or could you try seeing this from my perspective? They may even acknowledge there is clearly something going on with you, and maybe suggest you go and see a therapist to figure out what is wrong with you. Number four, they might pursue you relentlessly in order to try to grind you down. Now, this could include stalking. They could stalk you in real life, follow you around, or they could stalk you on social media but not necessarily make a secret of it. They may comment on every picture, every post that you put online. They may put up posts themselves knowing they're going to get a particular reaction from you, whether you comment or mention it or not. Now they may think they're acting like in some kind of bizarre romantic comedy and they're going to win you back. Or they may be just desperate to try and get their supply back. Or there could be something more sinister going on. They maybe think it's part of their revenge. Whatever the reason is, it's to let you know they're still around. Number five, they might try to get to you through your friends and through your family. Now, they may contact them as if they're concerned about you, or they might try to destroy that network by ingratiating themselves into their company. So this could be maybe making it difficult for you to hang around with those people if they're there, or they could be spreading rumours and gossip to try to destroy your character, your reputation. Doing and saying things that could make it difficult for those people to associate with you. There is some truth in that saying, whenever they can no longer control you, they will try to control how others see you. And this can be very intrusive, you might feel unsafe, intimidated. And if you were to confront them, challenge them, assert yourself with them somehow, it's still a win for them because you've engaged with them. Bad attention is better than none at all. Number six is emotional blackmail. Now, this involves a lot of guilt tripping and a lot of shaming. 
how can you after all I've done for you? Are you prepared to throw X number of years away? What will the children think? What about the cat? They may play on their illnesses, their issues, their traumas. How could you leave them in such a state? Does that not prove how uncaring and selfish you are? Or they may threaten to harm themselves, hoping that you will intervene. Number seven, they can become very aggressive. Or aggressive to either get you back on side or to punish you, to seek revenge. Now this can involve insulting, degrading language. There could be threats to expose your secrets. There could be threats of consequences if you don't comply. There can even be threats of consequences to others if you don't comply. In extreme cases, they can even become violent, physically violent, or they can destroy property. One way or another, those threats, those actions are often there to terrorize and to punish into submission. So there are seven common narcissistic reactions to being ignored. And the reasons behind these behaviors is all about getting their supply back, to try to get that attention back any way they can. Another quality of narcissism is that they can't bear to lose. It can be crushingly humiliating for them and, you know, sometimes they'll even promise the world just to get what they want. But whatever promises they make rarely last. They're often just a means to an end. They can often feel quite justified in their aggressive and toxic behaviour. When rejected, narcissistic people can feel disempowered and deeply wounded and will do whatever they can to protect themselves, now, even if that means being ridiculous, manipulative, or in some cases even violent and destructive. And that lack of empathy means they either don't understand or don't really care the impact that their behaviour has on others. And when emotionally wounded, narcissists can be quite vindictive, sometimes even sadistic, in their attempts to regain a sense of control and dominance. And narcissists have a long memory. That emotional wound can stay with them for a long time. And I think that by its very nature, narcissism can be very destructive. It tends to destroy things from the inside. Things like relationships, workplaces, communities, families even. But when it can no longer destroy things from the inside, they tend to try to destroy them from the outside. So there are just a few of the ways narcissistic people react when you no longer pay them any attention. Now, as always, there's many examples I could have added. Please feel free to use the comment box below. There are some interesting conversations start around these videos. But as always, if you find this video interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.